right. Ah, good. I see we've managed to evacuate the house safely. Excellent work, young man. Excellent work. Yes, well, that's what we need. A good site manager. Now, you do care for the appointment, don't you, old boy? Splendid. I appoint you site manager. I say, you can handle responsibility, can't you? Me, your mom. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> oh, you can be assistant site manager. And you can take your stuff and clear out of our garden. That's the angel. Whose side is she on? <laughs> Never mind. The charges are laid. What? what lies behind us lies before us and is at present beneath us. Here goes. <laughs> there you are, Maximus. <laughs> we missed you at the library. <laughs> I'm on field work today. But we followed the little map, you yes. know. That's very considerate. Well, don't bother me now. Speak to the site manager. Site manager? Stand back, stand back. We're no, no, to make no, history. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I shall report you to the Supreme Council. <laughs> I, I, I do hope Maximus here hasn't caused you too much bother. He, he goes off now and then, but we always find him in the end. Perfectly harmless. I'm just about to make a great scientific discovery when I'm interrupted by these bureaucrats, but I will be back. I will be back. Uh, uh, hold on. He talks like him knows something, Mark. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, he knows his stuff. Last week, it was inventing the motor car. That time, somebody did. <laughs> hey, it's man like that I like to interview on my radio programme. Man of distinctive vision, you know You're what I mean? You're the hospital radio DJ, aren't you? What, you mean St Matilda's? Yeah, man. Oh, well, come to the ward any time. You'll find Maximus there. Come on, Max. <laughs> the new matron is waiting on you. You'll like her. She's called Cleopatra. <laughs> They should have taken you with him, Bellamy. <laughs> and you. He was a nice guy. A true scientist, just like me. No, the guy was just jester in man. That ain't no real dynamite. He didn't hear that attendant guy said he was harmless. Ciao. <laughs> my God, look at this shit! Oh God! Hey, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry about that, Bellamy. <laughs> my real blood. with us thinking creatures no <laughs> they're alive they're alive <laughs> professor alive. bunker come they're into alive. a yard implant one bomb then blow up the yard so we still poor and them still alive and them stinking creatures them still survive <laughs> uh, you all right what's the matter peppy you have a prickle in your bum bum <laughs> I'm putting you right next to Satan at the foot of Uncle Tosh's bed. <laughs> you have to watch out, though. He snores, and his foot, they really sting. <laughs> and you, Humphrey, I'm putting you right next to a warm amplifier. And if you're good, one day, when Uncle Tosh is not here, I will give you a ride on his turntable. <laughs> hey, Bellamy, we are do. I'm making them feel at home. How do you feel if you're in a strange house? You, you're making them feel at home in my bedroom. Could you get me some water, please, in this? That's my box. You sick or what? The bombing must have made them thirsty. Look, I'm sorry to tell you this, but them animals that can't stay in this room. You have a legal responsibility, Tosh. It is because of you that they are homeless. Rubbish, you were the first one to agree with that professor. Damn idiot. And you were doing it for the treasure. Look, all right, Bellamy, whatever you say. But I'm telling you, I can't stay in the same room as no snake and thing. Look, <laughs> supposedly if I'm dreaming about, about Diana Ross one night and I reach out and touch a boa constrictor. <laughs> I have some sense, my man. All right, then. All right, what? You're going to move them? No. All right. We shall have a family conference. Angel! <laughs> Tosh, it was your fault. I mean, you did blow up the shed, so you shouldn't be so selfish. How much room do they take up anyway? And they're cleaner than you are. Look, if you want animals in the house, why don't you keep them in your room? Look, Tosh, you don't seem to understand. They have to stay with Bellamy, they right? They might go wild if their daddy ain't there to feed them. Look, Angel, <laughs> sense it. You know them animals like to crawl out of them cage at night and go for a walk? Yeah, look, you know the alligator thing? He can chew right through the damn cage and, and go in the wild overnight and then come and curl up all over my bed. Is that right? Bellamy, can they get out of their cages? Oi! 
Can they crawl about? I mean, like, straight up, Bellamy. If, look, you, you, don't, you don't really think he goes right inside the shoebox looking for the rest of his friends. <laughs> well, maybe Tosh is right. I mean, they do need fresh air, Bellamy. Yeah, perhaps they need to eat real grass. Look, don't the RSPCA look after unwanted animals? Unwanted? <laughs> and how's the creatures in there? Poor little thing. Yeah, what's wrong with that? The tent? Well, it's comfortable. I mean, it's, it's waterproof and it's shockproof and it's weather resistant and it's, um... Anti-magnetic. Anti-magnetic. <laughs> Made in Hong Kong. <laughs> the perfect ecological cover. Yes, give it to them, Bellamy. <laughs> later you're going to be using the tent <laughs> because of your love of nature look after your pets darling but also look after your brother and sisters and remember what we tell you about about listening to strangers <laughs> If I could talk to the animal, learn the language, maybe even take a degree. <laughs> I'd study elephant and eagle, butterfly and beagle, alligator, duck and chimpanzee. <laughs>